Liftoff is a pretty amazing moment. And, and it's a moment of, of so many contrasts because you start out, first of all, strapping into the vehicle and, and of course you're laying on your back. Your feet are up in the air, you're laying on your back. That happens about two and a half hours before liftoff. So, so first thing you have to do is get acclimated to laying on your back, feet in the air, orienting yourself in the, in the spacecraft, getting comfortable if you can do that in that big heavy pressure suit that you have to wear. Um, and then going through all your checklists. So, so you're, you're at times during the, that two and a half hours in the countdown, at times you're very busy and there are other times when uh, the launch control center is, is doing most of the commanding and, and watching out for the different systems. And so, so time kind of feels a little bit like an accordion. There are times when you're very busy and times when you're not. When you get inside nine minutes, a lot of things are going on. You're starting the auxiliary power units. The, the vehicle really seems to be coming to life at that point. Um, uh, you're, you're going through final checks of all the different systems, making sure that they're working. And then you get to 31 seconds, and that's where basically the shuttle is not only on internal power, but the shuttle computers are controlling the last few uh, thousand, literally thousand, <laughs> Uh, checklist items and uh, the external tank is pressurized uh, everything's ready to go you get to seven seconds and you start the the three shuttle main engines uh, and they come up one two three you're able to look down there and make sure that everything's everything's uh, in the green you're ready to go uh, and you count down to three two one zero and at zero the solid rocket motors both light off and and that is the most incredibly violent thing you can imagine the the main engines as they come up to speed they, they kind of push the shuttle over a little bit because they, they have so much thrust but you're still bolted to the launch platform and then the vehicle literally springs back a little bit and that's when the solid rockets fire and at that point, it's very, very violent. It shakes, it rattles, it rolls. Even with your visors down and everything, you really have to, have to almost shout to be heard uh, by the other crew members. It's very difficult to read the instruments. And, and by the time you clear the tower of uh, the launch platform, by the time you clear the tower, you're already going over 150 miles an hour. By the time you get to about uh, no, 40 seconds or so into flight, you've gone supersonic, uh, and all of this is straight up. Uh, you continue to accelerate, and you're pushed back in, in, in your seat two and a half uh, Gs or so, and that goes on for a couple minutes as the solid rockets burn out, and now you're up somewhere around uh, 40 miles up. And then they're jettisoned and they uh, parachute into the Atlantic and where they're recovered and towed back and refueled and reused. And, and at that point, you still have six and a half minutes to go to get to orbit. And six and a half minutes then is amazing because the contrast of the solar rocket boosters where it's a very, very rough ride, very violent, very noisy. Now you're up above most of the atmosphere, up at 40 miles. Um, the solid rockets have been jettisoned. The main engines uh, are almost like sewing machines. So the only thing uh, you can tell is that you're still getting pushed up into space by, by the main engines, uh, but you raise your visor, you can talk in a normal tone of voice, uh, you can read the instruments, you know, it's very, very smooth. It's, it's like, uh, almost like sitting in a chair, except for the fact that you're being accelerated uh, so much. And, and the last 30 seconds or so, um, you're accelerated at 3Gs and in fact throttling those main engines back to idle. Um, and then instantaneously you go from 3Gs acceleration to zero, you're weightless. Um, checklists on their tethers start to float. Uh, little specks of dust float up from behind the instrument panels. And, and then the wildest thing all is your arms float, which is the strangest thing you can imagine. It's here you are. You're in this big, heavy pressure suit, you know, and, and we're used to gravity. We're used to, you know, our arms being dragged down, and your arms float, and, and it's the oddest sensations. There they are. And then, all of a sudden, you realize that's where they're going to be for the next two weeks. 
because that's where they belong. You know, the, the strengths of your different muscle groups and everything, that's where they're comfortable. That's where they belong. And, and unless I do something physically, that's where they'll be.